Why did you want to work in education? I always wanted to be a teacher um, ever since I was really young um, when I could start playing make-believe it was always I was always a teacher um, working with students and, and helping them um, and I just never lost that passion it kept going and as I went through high school and college I just kept it up I always wanted to be a teacher and uh, what was there anything in particular that got you interested in education as a career I just like kids and and um, kids say the most interesting things and uh, they really um, when you start working with children they um, have a different perception on life and maybe I'm a kind of a kid at heart but I enjoy all those little influences that they do and to be able to help nurture nurture that and see them grow and blossom into adults is um, quite a rewarding and thrilling job. Uh, tell me a story about one of your favorite teachers. <laughs> Um, that's funny. Uh, the first one that pops into my mind is Mr. Brown. Um, he was a high school accounting teacher and I get asked that question quite a bit of why is he your most favorite teacher and I have to sit and reflect why was it he my, my most favorite teacher. Besides his presentation, he'd sit at the front of the class on his stool, he was a bigger guy with his hands and he would just you know bark out commands to us but yet he knew every one of us in the classroom and he would do the most bizarre silly things that would make us all feel a little human and all that we were all needed there no matter our skill level and he had that way of connecting with all of us and um, when I got married many years ago he was there at my wedding Mr. Brown was an icon of the of the community. Uh, did he do you remember anything that he taught you? Or do you, do, you, do you remember most his oh, relationship to the class? The relationship to the class, but yeah. it was accounting. And I was always kind of a fan of numbers. I liked math. And he made it seem so easy. And I think it was because he made that personal connection with me um, right off the bat and with my other classmates. I mean, it was funny. And when you're laughing and having fun, you remember what's going on. You remember everything in your environment. And he made me want to become an account accountant, I thought, for a while, because I always liked teaching and I always wanted to be a teacher. And I thought, well, maybe I could teach accounting. And then um, that didn't work out so well. I decided accounting wasn't my, <laughs> I should be a teacher. And so, um, but he, he definitely drove that passion in all of us. Can you tell me about your job responsibilities at the department? Yes, I have actually quite a few job responsibilities. I, I always say I wear three hats in the department. I work in the Office of Assessment, and so I work with the North Dakota State Assessment in ELA, Math and Science, and then I also um, am a lead on the North Dakota Alternate Assessment, which is kids with significant cognitive disabilities um, who get alternate curriculum because their disabilities impact um, their learning to the degree they can't learn the same as their peers. Um, and then with that, I work a lot with accessibility and accommodations, making sure that students have access, equal access um, to assessment, to instructional procedures. Um, and then with that, I work in the Office of Special Education. I've been in special education my whole career. Um, since I started teaching, um, it was probably 24 years I've been in special education. Um, so for me to be able to take what I've um, learn through special education and work in the office assessment is amazing. Um, with that I have one final portfolio that I work a lot on and that's the innovation education program. So working with school districts on coming up with ideas and activities to do school differently and really help support them from a policy perspective on what kinds of activities or barriers they might foresee they have to do school differently to be able to improve um, their student growth. You mentioned special education. What drew you to that discipline? It's interesting. I never um, really thought about special education until my third year of school. And um, <clears throat> my mom, who um, worked with um, disadvantaged children in the community that I'm from, um, had suggested and had me come in and do some work in the summertime to help tutor some of her students. And all of them typically had some kind of a learning need. And she said, you know, you work really well with those kids that, you know, that are not, that struggle in their learning. Have you ever thought about special education? I'm like, no, I don't know anything about that, Mom. Forget it. And then I started my third year of college, and my advisor said, you know, I really think that you should think about a double major in, in general ed and special ed. And I'm like, no, I don't know anything about that. And so then from that, it went to an introductory class and really 
finding out that oh I can I I like this this is good it's, students are complex every kid is different um, every kid is unique and it's it's a puzzle to try to figure out where their strengths and weaknesses are because sometimes they don't even know which then I also think helps support that a work I do in the agency here as far as innovation learning competency based education and personalized learning they just blend so well together what do you think it is about your makeup that why did these people tell you that you were suited to special education are you in unusually empathetic or what is it <laughs> I don't know you know sometimes people have a uh, interesting way of uh, noticing the strengths that you have that you don't always know that you have your own and um, I think it's those people that had brought that to my attention to really get me to internalize what my strengths are to realize that I can help other kids really internalize what their strengths are no matter what the learning barriers they have and my mom <laughs> I always attribute it to my mom because uh, my parents worked with underprivileged families. That was what they did. They worked in social services. They supported people who struggled either financially or, you know, learning wise or even not even being able to, you know, how to handle and manage themselves as adults. And um, they involved my brother and I very much into that process. And I guess I never realized how ingrained it was from when I was little until I moved out of the house that this is what you do to help people. This is what you do to give back to your community. So I think that upbringing really um, deepened my understanding that I didn't even realize had occurred. <clears throat> uh, how long have you worked here? I worked for the Department of Public Construction for six years. And prior to that, um, I think I said I was in special education for 22, 23 years. Why did you want to work at the department? It's interesting because um, I love to be a teacher and always wanted to be a teacher. And I had the opportunity to go back to school um, to get my doctorate degree in educational leadership. And I knew it was a phase that I wanted to go because I wanted to grow and be able to become a leader in the field of special education. And when I think about when I had to put my application in to see if I was even eligible to be admitted into the um, doctoral school of education, um, we had to write an essay. And in that essay, you had to put your passion. What is it that you want to do? And what is this going to do for you to help you move forward in your career aspirations? And I went and I actually have read that essay a couple times, even since I've graduated. And I graduated in 2017 with my doctorate degree. Um, Within that essay, the first few sentences are, I aspire to work at the state and federal level to support students in special education and be an advocate for them as to the degree possible that I can. So, And you saw working for the department as an avenue for doing that? Yes, and it was opportunity that came up and it was all in perfect timing. Uh, what do you like about your job in particular? Well, I love the people I work with. Everybody here is amazing. Um, we all have a passion and vision that is all very similar. We want to be able to provide students in North Dakota with the best learning opportunities they can and however we can help and support school districts to do that, I think is awesome. The opportunities I have and the impact I can have on helping make decisions to help support the students is very motivating. It's, it's challenging. Um, but every day when I go home at the end of the day, I can say I did my very best to help do what I could do to help better the education for students in North Dakota. Uh, can you just tell me a bit about yourself? Uh, where are you from originally? Where did you go to school? Uh, what kind of jobs did you have before you came to work at the department? This will be a fun fact. I'm a North Dakota native. I was born and raised in Devil's Lake, North Dakota. I graduated high school. Um, in Devil's Lake and then went to Lake Region State College for two years before then I moved on to Minot State to get my master or my bachelor's and my master's. So I've never moved outside of North Dakota. I've lived in um, in the western part of the state and then here in the central part of the state. So I didn't even move around cities all that much within North Dakota. My very first job I remember in high school I was a car hop at a place called Dell's Drive-In in Devil's Lake, who had the best food ever. Um, they are in a sense no longer, but that is where I learned all my first job coping skills. And then from there, I just worked miscellaneous jobs um, to help me 
pay for my college and, and get through college until I got my first teaching degree in the western part or teaching position in the western part of North Dakota. The job at Dells, what did it teach you about coping? I mean, what, what sort of skills did you learn? Oh, you had to have people skills for sure. You had to, besides the fact that you had to carry out trays of food and put them gracefully on a, on, on a car window, um, you had to learn to communicate with people. You had to deal with disgruntled people who did not like their burgers because you didn't make it the right way. Um, all the way up to managing money, managing time, and all those little pressure kind of activities that I don't know as though you really ever learn until you actually are in a position like that. Plus it was fun. We got to wear roller skates sometimes. <laughs> Only on 50s dress up day did we get to wear the poodle skirts. But So it wasn't anything anyone really considered a <laughs> a, a, a car hop kind of position. But <laughs> What do you like to do when you're not at work? You know, I have lots of activities that I like to do. I um, am, I enjoy um, working out, running, and lifting weights. That's part of what I do on a regular basis. It's my normal routine, but I have a passion for that. It's, it's very fun, and um, I enjoy doing and trying new sporting activities. Um, I also have, my husband is um, works for the state of North Dakota. He's in law enforcement, and he is a canine, and his canine is name is Boudreau and he's a search and rescue dog and so with that um, we've had him four years and because of having him I've had many opportunities to learn um, how to work with and train dogs to search for people and that has given me opportunity to travel internationally um, to help support him and train other people's dogs as well as me learning how to do it so I, I always think boy Someday when I retire, I think I'm going to get a full-time job training dogs to search people. It's, it's amazingly fun. In fact, um, I could possibly eventually, hopefully someday, get my own dog that I can use to volunteer for search and rescue teams. Do you know why the dog's name is Boudreaux? No, he came to us with Boudreaux, um, but he is definitely, if you were to meet him, he's a Boudreaux. He's a full-blooded <laughs> bloodhound, and I have never been introduced to bloodhounds before, but he has the bay like you our neighbors used to say, hey, we have company. Can you make Boudreaux Bay? And so we'd have to say, Boudreaux, <laughs> you know, start baying for us. And he would do it. Um, but uh, since I had traveled to, um, we were just in Italy training dogs. Um, in Italy, they take um, training search and rescue dogs very seriously. Um, they don't do it only for search and rescue, but they also do it for competition. So it's, I always say it's that adult version of serious hide and seek games. You hide and my dog will find you. Mm -hmm. um, but learning the different personalities of um, dogs is simply amazing. I thought Boudreaux was the light of my life and he was a good listener until I, I, I met dogs that like to do things for their owners and bloodhounds like to do what they want to do when they want to do it. So they're a little stubborn. What's unique about that opportunity though that made me think about this is having the opportunity to go and learn and interact with dogs. My husband understands you know what I do but I you always wonder do they understand or my even my whole family to the degree of how um, individualized and personalized teaching students can be. And it was not until we were in Italy and when he was standing in a classroom trying to explain to a group of 30 people, all who have different dogs, all with different personalities, how to individualize each dog's behavior to get them to do what you want them to do and how unique each individual dog is. And I'm not saying comparing students to dogs, but it was the moment that went off, a light bulb went off in his, his head and he goes, oh my gosh, now I understand. I understand, Tammy, why you know, you're exhausted at the end of the day because you have to really work to figure out what works with each kid. And he goes, I never realized it till now. So I'm glad we had the opportunity to go to Italy to train dogs for him to, to realize To understand that. your job yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What, uh, what's your most marked characteristic? Um, I'd say I'm very positive. Uh, people would call me very optimistic. I'm very cheery and hap happy and outgoing. I always try to find the positive in everything, and again, I think that comes from my upbringing. You know, everybody can, my parents always said, you know, we work with people that are disadvantaged, and so when you're feeling ungrateful, think about 
things that other people don't have access to. So you, someone always um, needs to, you need to always be thankful for what you have because it could always get worse. And so then that's kind of my motto in life also is like, okay, okay, what can we bring out of this? If every, if a situation is challenging, there's positive in there. We're getting, you know, posed with challenges because it has to push us to a limit to find what it is that we want to want to get to in the end. And so um, I often have my colleagues will come to me and say, if I'm having a down day, I'm just going to come talk to Tammy because she'll find the positive out of every negative situation. And I probably would say that's true for most of the time. <laughs> What's your greatest fear? My greatest fear is not enjoying life to every moment. And that sounds maybe a little textbooky maybe, but I always worry that I'm not gonna stop and smell the roses as much as I should stop and smell the roses. I know life is precious and it, and it goes by in a blink of an eye and I know people understand that, but until you're put in different situations, I think you realize it a little bit more. And when life gets very busy, I have to make a purposeful intent to stop and say, okay, at the end of the day, what did I enjoy? And if I can't say that every day at the end of the day, then I know I didn't do my job of making sure to enjoy every moment as it is. So, What chore do you never want to do again? <laughs> Butcher chickens. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up, my parents, I always say my parents were transients. They never owned homes. We lived in the same town all, well, I lived in the same town for 20 years of my life. And we, they always rented houses because, like, you get done with one house and you're kind of bored with it, you rent another one. And it was just what they did and what all our family did. But many, oftentimes, we lived um, with some relatives, like they were farmers in the community in Devil's Lake that I lived in. And we always, no matter if we moved away from the farm or moved back to the farm, we had to butcher chickens. And I swore to God, as an adult, I would never butcher a chicken ever again because that was a chore I hated. And to this day, I have not done it. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else you want to add? Uh, no, no. I can't think of anything unless you have more questions for me. <laughs> <laughs> not, not right now. Well, thank you for your time.